In this video, I want to take a look at graphs of functions of several variables. And as I did with the graphing of vector functions, I cannot emphasize enough here uh, for you to go out and play. Get a graphing calculator of some kind that'll do 3D, uh, find software. I use GraphPlot, no, what's it called? CalcPlot 3D to do all the graphs that I have in this. Um, you got to get used to what's what's happening. I, I will show you some examples, but the more you play with it, the more you're going to figure out how this all works. Uh, anyway, uh, in the previous video, I was very careful not to write like z equals f of xy. I would just say f of xy equals a function. Um, and I would give, you know, the formula for how to calculate that function. Now I'm going to start writing this z equals f of xy because I want to look at graphs. I want to think about inputs and outputs and give the name, give all the variables names, right? So when we had functions of one variable and we were drawing graphs, we would have one axis that would be the axis for the input, and we'd have one axis that would be the axis for the output. And so for each input value, you'd then calculate what the output is and you'd plot that point. Now, let's say we're looking at functions of two variables here, z equals f of x, y. You've got two variables of input, so you've got an x and a y axis, and then we have one variable of output. And so rather than the graphs being curves in the plane, they're now going to be surfaces in space, because for each x and y, you calculate z, plot that point, then for the next x and y, you calculate that z and the next x and y, you calculate that z. And so you get a whole surface over the xy plane, or under if the z's are negative, but you get this surface, which will be the, the graph of that equation. Sorry, that'll be the graph of that function. It's also the graph of this equation, but we think of it as the graph of that function, z equals that function. Now, if you have functions of three variables, so you have three variables worth of input and then one variable worth of output, you're now looking at a graph that's somewhere out in the fourth dimension. It becomes more difficult to visualize. I don't say impossible because I do think it is possible to visualize it, at least get some idea of what's going on with uh, those graphs. Um, but we will stick for this video with just uh, functions of two variables. So. We've seen some of this already because we have seen, for instance, an equation like this, z equals x plus y. This is linear in x, y, and z. We've seen this is the graph of a plane. Right? We could find the normal vector for that plane if we wanted to and whatnot. But here's, you know, here's the graph, and I can move it around and look at it here. It's, it's a plane. This, this is always weird to move around. I get the z-axis going up as much as I can here. Uh, notice that the x-axis is running, positive x-axis is running this way, positive y-axis is hidden behind there. So when those are, you know, x and y are getting bigger, you add them up, the z is getting bigger and bigger. Over here, where x and y are both negative, and you're adding negatives together, uh, you're getting big negative numbers. And then when you're, uh, when x and y, one is positive, one is negative, you could get positives, or you could get negatives, or you could just stick at zero there. So anyway, there's, there's that graph. It's a plane. We've seen other ones as well. For instance, um, z equals x squared plus y squared. This is your um, paraboloid, an elliptic paraboloid, or circular paraboloid in this case. And let's take a quick look at that graph. It's this paraboloid opening upwards. Now, if it was x squared, let me get my, my face out of the way here. If this was x squared minus y squared, then you would have your hyperbolic parabola. Right? For each point x, y, you calculate z, plot it. For the next point x, y, calculate z, plot it. Right? And you get this surface. Now, I want to quickly look at a uh, notion called traces. And the traces are when you pick a particular x or a particular y value and you look at how it slices the surface. So in the case that we just had here with um, 
z equals x squared plus y squared. Uh, that's this thing. I'm now looking at the plane y equals 1. And I can see that y equals 1 is intersecting my surface in, in a parabola. Well, sure. I mean, if I had z equals x squared plus 1, I know that that's a, you know, z equals x squared would be a parabola, and then the plus 1 just shifts it up 1, right? Uh, so if I say z equals 0.5, Sorry, y, did I say, y equals 0.5, then you can see that's a different parabola. Well, that would be x squared plus a half squared, or x squared plus a four, so it would be a parabola shifted up. So what I see is, as I change different values of y, I'm shifting a parabola differently. I mean, x squared plus y squared, I mean, this is quadratic in x, so it's a parabola, but then it's being shifted by a quadratic amount in y. So I've got this parabola that is being shifted up and down. Let's see if I can do this up and down and up again here, right? Depending on what, what the y values are. And so I'm getting, uh, getting that paraboloid. Likewise, I could, I could do this. Because this is um, not z equals, I have to use a different um, graphing technique here to uh, to get it to plot these vertical planes. Um, so there's x equals a constant, and then you can see that that is intersecting in that parabola, because if I step as x equals 1, so this is z equals 1 squared plus y squared. So this is now a parabola going this way, right, shifted by so much and up. It's shifted sideways because I picked the value x equals 1. So from the origin, I have to move over 1. And then it goes up 1 because 1 squared is 1. Um, and pick different values of 1. And of course, you have different amounts of shift. And I say shift because what I'm doing to the y squared is adding x squared. And that causes a vertical shift. Um, and it moves sideways because I'm picking a different value of x. So it moves sideways in the x direction, and then it gets shifted different amounts in the z direction because of what the way we're combining x's and y's. Traces. So if you can get an idea what the traces are for different values of x or different values of y, then you can get an idea of perhaps what the graph is. The grid lines on the surfaces that I'm plotting are the traces. For different values of x and y. So you see parabolas going up this way, you see parabolas going up that way. Of course, if I were to change this to the hyperbolic paraboloid, then here I've got, you know, the traces are of all parabolas going downward, but over in this direction, the traces are all parabolas going upwards. I just want to run through a bunch of different examples. It's just, it's a matter of playing. Z equals X times Y, right? This one is a hyperbolic paraboloid like, like we just had, but it's been twisted. Although this one I see, uh, I see differently because of the, the way I'm dealing with X and Y together. If I pick a particular value of X, let's say X equals one, then I've got z equals y. Well, that's a straight line with slope 1. If I pick z x equals 2, then I've got z equals 2y. Well, that's a line with slope 2. And so when I look down, you know, one of these axes, so I'm looking down, so I look down the x-axis if I can, what I see are different lines with different slopes. In particular, if I took uh, x equals zero, uh, then that's just, that's just z equals zero. So in that, right, the x axis here and the y axis both, either one of them equal to zero, z is equal to zero. So the, the x axis is completely on that plane and the, on that surface and the y axis is completely on that surface. So this is just a bunch of straight lines with different slopes. Starting over here with this slope, ending over there with that slope, right? and you, draw, you get this 
sepal shape. Z equals x times y. Um, how about something like this? Z equals x squared times sine y. Right. Now this, this I see a little differently. These are multiplied together. Uh, and so actually I, I see this as, you know, I know what a sine curve looks like. Right, up and down and up and down. And the x squared is sitting in the spot where I usually think of the amplitude. So the amplitude of this sine wave in the y direction is changing as x squared. So as I, as I move in the x direction, I get different amplitude sine waves. Um, so I need, to, I need to zoom out a little bit on this. Uh, so if I look at it this way, the grid lines that I see going across the screen look like sine curves. Right? And there's, so this is the y direction is running this way. So I'm seeing either small sine curves or big sine curves, depending on what x is, right? Because x squared is the amplitude. So whether, whether it's close to me with positive x's or on the back side with negative x's, the amplitude is going to be the same because you square the x. Right. Looking this way, what I see are different parabolas. Right? That I see parabolas opening downward or opening upward. Because if you think of constant values of y, you're looking at sine y is just a number, so you get some number times x squared. Well, that's going to be a parabola. And if that, if that number that you're multiplying by is positive, it'll be a parabola opening upward. If that's negative, it'll be a parabola opening downward. So you see some upward parabolas and some downward parabolas. Um, sometimes I think of I think of describing this in terms of, of of dance. So if I'm if I'm walking along the the y axis and the x axis is going this way, so y axis is coming at you, right? I got parabolas that open up, and then as I move towards you, there it opens up like that, and then the parabola is opening downward. You can't really see my arms. But my arms are pointing downward now, and as I go back, they go upwards, right? up and down and up and down, and you just you just fly this. Uh, this is a flapping bird, the wings of a flapping bird, as you move along the axis, you know, this way. So much fun stuff! So much fun stuff! Here's another example: uh, sine of x times y. Uh, I need to see a little more of this. So this kind of has that hyperbolic paraboloid inside of the sine curve. And it's got these up and down waves going off in those directions. Kind of interesting. I can get a little better resolution here by upping the the density of the plot, smooth it out some. Beautiful, just beautiful. This this is why I do math. This is why I do math, so I can draw pretty pictures. I could never do that by hand. But I can come up with some formulas and plug them in and let a computer draw it, and I'm good. All right, let's, let's take a look at another one here. Uh, how about sine of x squared plus y squared? Let's click on that and... Well, that's interesting. Let's zoom out a little bit here again. Oh, what's happening here? I need a little better resolution. Now I've got circular waves. One thing that's happening here is that these each crest, it's not immediately obvious, but they're getting closer together as you move out. Uh, this inside of the sine curve is growing like a quadratic. And quadratics get steeper as you move further away from zero. Right? And so you're going, you're running through the sine curve faster and faster and faster as, as you move away from the origin here. So that's a pretty big gap and then a smaller gap and a smaller gap because you're increasing the frequency as you move out. I want to see if I can get those to be equally spaced. Actually, I know I can get them to equally spaced by putting a square root here around the stuff inside. So essentially, rather than growing like a paraboloid, this is going to grow like a cone. And the cone has a nice straight edge to it. And so when I do that, 
Um, apparently, it's yeah, it doesn't rise as quickly, and so we don't see as many bumps. But if I zoom out some more, all right, so I zoomed out some, and we've got um, essentially ripples in the pond. Right? We've got circular sine wave going outward. Um, there's just there's just so many different things we could do here. How about how about if I make this? Uh, these these are all the same amplitude. What if I diminish the amplitude? So as they go out, they get smaller in in you know so they lose energy essentially. So if I let's say divide by the square root of x squared plus y squared. Then they should have, yeah, the ripples get less and less as you go out. Yeah. Play, play, just experiment. It's just so much fun to figure out what kind of functions give you what kind of surfaces. Uh, I have one last one I want to throw up here. Uh, this one is oh, let's go down. This one is circular ripples, but it's two sets of circular ripples added together. One of the sets of circular ripples is centered at uh, the origin, and the other one is centered out on the x-axis at seven. I've got this shift x minus seven in there, so it's over here. And so you've got circular ripples, and they add together. There you have what's what's referred to as an interference pattern. Um, and I can create that by just adding the two functions together, sine of this unshifted one, and then plus the sine of the shifted one over here. And I get some crazy interference patterns. Play. Have fun. Enjoy this stuff. Calcplot 3D is, uh, is a really good tool. Um, there's others out there that are also equally good. Um, find one, have some fun playing with these graphs.